Hello, and welcome to the Narrow Gate. My name's Gary, and it's good to be in communication with you. And especially since, I don't know if you all have heard, but Facebook and Instagram was down for six hours as of today. So by the time you get this recording... It will definitely be Wednesday, but you will know that this recording was made on Monday. So I just wanted to throw that out there, and I find that kind of interesting. And we really don't know too much about what the reasons are for Facebook and Instagram being down for as long as they have been. But I can say, even in the midst of it all, God is moving, and Lord, we praise you. And even in this hour, I'm sure that there is a lot of us that are going through some pretty heavy things. And I want to start off with, even for myself, I'm not one to throw out my information, so I'm going to be discreet as possible with this but me myself I am going through some stuff too and it's like and I have to be honest I really haven't thoroughly known what it felt like to feel persecution until these past two years and I sit back and I think about these things and I'm just like, man, there's a lot of people out there that are going through a lot more circumstances than myself. There's some people that have hard, hard lives here in the United States, but there's also been people in other countries that have been persecuted for their faith or have been wronged in some way way, shape, or form, that is tragic, and that totally violates human rights. So, I sit back and I think to myself, well, my circumstances don't seem much, but they are just enough to allow our heads to be screwed on right, because we really do need to wake up. For those of us in the United States and for those of us in other places that are pretty well off, we do have it a lot better than some. And so my circumstance that I'm going through, which is which is minor by many stand standards, if I can try to make it as discreet as possible, I am faced with a decision that I have to make. And my decision will ultimately, or could ultimately, draw the outcome of financial strain. And what do I mean by that? How can I I say it in such a way? Ultimately, I have to make a decision, and my decision that I make could cost me some things. It could cost me uh, a way in which I will make means. It could cost me in a way in which I will provide for my family. It can cost me in ways that will harm my reputation in some eyes. And... You could say I'm going through the fire in this decision that I'm looking to make. But ultimately, when you're under conviction, and ultimately, when you have to make a decision and you feel the pressing of the Holy Spirit upon you, It's something that you just can't let go. And it kind of put things into perspective. I guess you all could reflect on 
some of the topics that Corey and myself have talked about in the past. And the one thing that really stood out to me, I would say, in these past couple of days was Rosa Parks. And Rosa Parks have been on my mind quite a bit. And a couple of days ago, I was working through some of the things that I'm going to have to go through um, during the week. And the thought came into my mind, this is what Rosa Parks must have felt when she had to make a decision or when she wanted to make a decision. And to make it a little bit more clear with what I'm saying is imagine Rosa Parks. She is totally not okay with the discrimination that is going on in that point, in that time, in the 50s. And excuse my phrase, you have the whites that can sit up front and the colors have to sit in the back. And they even had signs that would designate which person could sit in the front and which person could sit in the back. And to be honest, I bet you Rosa Parks was probably going on the bus each day, like taking her normal route that she normally takes to get from point A to point B. And every time that she gets on that bus, she feels a strong conviction for righteousness. She feels a strong conviction to go against the grain. But in the midst of that, there's this fear and there's this worry and there's this doubt that comes in. It's like, what what could I do that could possibly make a difference in this world? Or... It may have been so small as it could have just been, I don't like the way people are being treated. I don't like the way that this situation is and there needs to be a change. And then you have two sides of the coin. You have this righteousness that bubbles up inside of you and gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But then on the other side of the coin, you have this anxiety in the pit of your stomach. Because you're not sure that you could persevere. Or you're not sure that you could push through the circumstances. What is this person going to say? Or what is that person going to say? What's going to happen to me financially? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to be physically harmed? Is, is, is something really bad going to happen if I make the decision that I'm going to make the decision? You have that strong conviction inside to make a difference, so you do it. So instead of sitting in the back, you make a choice to sit in the front of the bus. And when that happens, whoosh, It's a whole can of worms that opens up. But it happened. And because it happened, it brought attention to a circumstance that needed to be changed. It shed light on the darkness that was occurring behind the curtains. Though the 1950s was... You know, definitely there's a lot more moral backbone in that point in time than there is now. But the one thing that it severely needed adjustment was the poor treatment of multiple human beings. It was a strong need for unity in such a way that only God can provide. And because of those that persevered and pushed through that particular 
generation. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was established. And then later on down the road, they had the American Disabilities Act that was established for those to be treated respectfully. So brothers and sisters, here I am. Without saying too much, I'm faced with my own circumstances where I just can't be silent. And whether it's a Martin Luther King type situation that occurs, which some could say that this could possibly be, or it might not be, or it's just as simple as sitting in front of the bus without creating too much noise, too much attention, and too much conflict. There are two sides of the spectrum on this particular circumstance, but Lord, I just pray that you would show me what I have to do, because I just can't keep silent anymore. And Father, I pray that if there are those that are listening that have something inside that they just can't keep quiet anymore. Lord, I pray that you would touch them and give them the ability to walk forward in that. Because there is a breakthrough that will come out of their circumstances. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to happen at the moment, it will make a difference. It can be some something simple as making an impact in a few people's lives. It stirs the pot and then it makes it helps them move forward and to do the same thing as well. So when you all are done with this episode and any point in time down the road the next few weeks or however long I just say, would you pray for me? Would you pray for my family? Because we got to make some decisions. And besides all these things, the Lord said to me that I will provide for you. And that makes me smile because I know for a fact that even though the situation may look very narrow. I'm going on the right track. Because the narrow it goes, the more you know you're in line with God. The more you know you're in line with the Father. Because if I chose to take the path that every other person wants to take, it could lead to destruction. And in my case, it would lead to unfulfillment. And I have to go the path that God wants me to go. And I didn't think it was going to go this way, but here we go. Bear with me. The Lord gave me a vision. And I guess you could say nine years ago, I went to a conference. And to be a little bit more detailed, it was a Messianic conference. And the interesting part about the Messianic conference was that before I even went to this conference, I went to a wedding. In the wedding, there of course was alcohol. Now, keep in mind, those that of you that really don't know my story, I had some issues with alcoholism smoked a lot of cigarettes, you know, I had a little bit of a party thing going on. I did, did some other th- other recreational things, so to speak, to sort of make, to take away some of the pain and depression and uh, anxieties and other things that I carried uh, subconsciously and knowingly. But before all that, I spent a couple years staying away from alcohol and it seemed like I would do really well 
for a short period of time, whether it was cigarettes, whether it was alcohol. But somehow I always found myself going back to those things. Because, you know, there's a God-shaped hole that was in my heart that wasn't being filled at the time. I went to the wedding and some drinks were offered and it was not maliciously. I don't think those people particularly knew the background of my story and some of the circumstances that I went through because generally I'm a private person. Up until recently, I would say the past two or three years, I was pretty much a private person. I really didn't talk about too much uh, of my past and those things that went on in my life. In this, in this, you know, situation, I drank, I would say, from 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. And granted, I did hold, I did hold it pretty well. The headache wasn't, you know, wasn't there either. So, you know, I recovered pretty good. And I remember, I guess it was about 2 in the morning, because when I would drink, I wouldn't be able to go to sleep that night. It was it was like whenever I drank, I would just automatically be up uh, forever, how, however long it was. You know, so it, usually it was like a 24-hour period where I'd just be awake if there was alcohol involved the night before. I remember, like I said, at 2 in the morning, I was laying in bed and I was thinking to myself, when am I going to fall back into drinking again? Because I did drink, and I knew the pattern. Like, a week later, I would have a couple more drinks, and then it would be... Five days later, and I would have some more drinks, and then it would shrink back to three days later. I would have some drinks, and then it would shrink down to two days later. I would have some drinks, and then it would shrink down to a day later that I would have some drinks. And then by the time I got to one, it would be very, very hard for me to break away from not drinking at all. That was my story and I had that worry but I knew that I was going to the conference that day later on in the in the morning I was going to prepare get myself ready and then I was going to go out to the conference so that was exciting to me and I remember driving to this conference And I was thinking to myself, man, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? It always happens the way it does. When is it going to happen? And that was my big, big worry. It was like the enemy was knocking on my my head saying, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen like every time before. And to be honest, what makes anything different? Because it was just another day. And I remember going to this conference that night and something happened. I felt the Holy Spirit. They they had a concert that night and they were like, if anybody has any, you know, if they want to give themselves to the Lord and come up on stage and feel a pulling or, or feeling a nudging or something in their spirit where they really feel like they need to come up there, then please come up and we'll have somebody pray for you uh, as you receive the Lord. So, I did. I felt a strong pulling. It's like I, I felt like I was preventing myself from standing up and going down there. It was like my flesh didn't want to do it, but something within me was trying to force myself up and go down to the front of the stage so I did I listened to that pulling I I, I listened to that uh, feeling of the Holy Spirit pulling me and guiding me and directing me to do that so I did so I went down 
and then I was off the way, far away in a corner so that nobody would pray for me because I, I really didn't want anybody to pray for me. Though I kind of did, but I didn't really because I, I felt conspicuous. But anyway, there was a Messianic rabbi that came up, laid his hand on my back, and started praying for me. And I felt the power of the Holy Spirit hit me that day. And all these tears started rolling out of my eyes. And I felt this warmth. And I felt this power. And I felt this shift that occurred in me. That was different. And it was amazing. I can tell you one thing. From that moment on, I never had a desire to drink again. Smoke again smoke weed again and I can tell you that there were some other addictions that fell off of me too and maybe I'll describe those things down the road but there are many others and the interesting thing was weeks went by months went by and then a year went by and I realized I didn't fall back into that and that was incredible and it's still incredible. Because the Lord did set me free. But what I want to talk about is, and I'm trying to remember because I went to the conference like three times, uh, three or four times. And before the Lord kind of moved me in a different direction. So, this was either the first year of the conference or the second year of the conference. And I want to say it's the second year of, that I went to the conference. So, we're going forward a little bit. And when I went to the conference for my second year, I was very, very tired. And some people that were with with me or, you know, that was waiting for me to go to some of these classes, they asked me if I could go. And I remember being really tired, and I ended up going, and I ended up hearing this particular class, and the class was talking about the unity in the body of Christ between Jew and Gentile. And it struck me. And I remember going to my room that... that um, I forget what time it was. But anyway, I got into the room and I felt the, the Holy Spirit really strongly. And I said, Lord, this really resonates with me. This, this is really something that is important to me. And what do you want me to do about it? I feel this strong presence of the Lord upon me. What do you want to do about it? What do you want me to do? I, I feel like the part of this is my calling. Can you show me something? Because I don't know how it would be possible if the body of Christ could unite in such a way where it would be unstoppable. And then I felt the power, I felt this, I wouldn't say power, but I felt this really, really strong uh, tiredness come over me. What ended up happening was I just laid down in bed and I got real drowsy. But I remember seeing this ocean. And it was only for a short amount of time. But I saw this ocean and it was like I was above the water looking down. In my vision, all of a sudden this really large island popped up out of the ocean there was some grass there was some sand the whole nine yards and then around this really large island all of a sudden all these little islands started to pop up and then from there it was like if you looked at the at the top you saw all these islands just around each other very very close to each other and then all of a sudden, all these bridges started forming on each of the islands so that they would all connect to each other. All the islands were connected at that point. 
And then all of a sudden these mountains grew in these islands, each of the islands. And then the hills grew in each of the islands. So you had hills on mountains and and hills on the ground and you had uh you had all those things start to develop and then it was developing on each of the islands and then from there there was these little bridges that were going from hill to hill and mountain to mountain and they were all interconnected and looking at the top and down into the water with all these islands with bridges connected to them and everything I woke up and I really didn't know what it was that I was seeing and I really didn't know what I was seeing until five years later after five years went by I started to get an understanding of what all that meant and the interpretation of it is all the islands that are connected to the larger island of course that's a representation of Israel which is a light to the nations but also the island is a representation of Jesus Christ who is a light to the world and from that island these bridges are connected to all these other islands and then the hills and the and the mountains so that's a representation of different tribes and nations and tongues and they're all together in unity they're all together connected you could you could walk from one place to another it didn't take that long to get to the next destination and what the Lord showed me was that this is my church. This is how I want my church to be. This is the end times church. This is a church that will not be shaken. This is a church that will not be moved. They will be united. They will be in me. And they will know who they are. And they will stand their ground. This is my ecclesia. These are my people, my family, both Jew and Gentile, together as one. Because believe it or not, the roots are Jewish. The roots that connect to the ground of the olive tree are Jewish. And the Gentiles are grafted in. So we are all together in one harmony this is the vision this is what I believe the Lord wants us to get to and these are the reasons for the shakings that are occurring because the Lord wants us to be woken up now I'm not saying every single tragic thing that has happened is rests on him shakings are shakings and sin is sin. You know, people are given free will to sin. And they have a choice whether to sin against another, sin against themselves, and so on and so forth. But I truly believe that we are being placed in the situations and circumstances that are allowing us to be changed. And to backtrack to my personal circumstance... I'm being shaken in every way possible. And I have to wake up and do what I'm doing with these things in the back of my mind. But in my heart, I know that's what's going on and what has been going on for a bit is not unity. It's far from unity. Because when one person, one group points a finger at another group and puts the blame it's not unity it's not love and I don't know if you all know what your calling is that the Lord has for you but he has 
a calling for you. The Lord has something specific that he wants you all to do. And I'm going to look at a, a scripture real quick. And I'm reading from Matthew 22, verse 2 through 14. The kingdom of heaven, and this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatted calf are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, and another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and sent out his armies, destroyed the murderers, and burnt up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So the servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. And what I like about this is, as the way the kingdom of God is, the Father has his heart to have everybody come unto him, everybody receive him, Everybody come into the wedding feast because we are the bride and Jesus is the groom. And it's not in his heart for us to be bound hand and foot and cast into outer darkness. But it's his desire for us to come into the kingdom and be married to the bridegroom. But for many are called, but few are chosen. Many of us have gifts. Many of us have callings. He desires each and every one of us. But the question is, are we going to walk in that specific calling that he has for us? Or are we just plain church? Are we walking in the purpose that we're supposed to be in? Or are we pretending? Yeah, we can have a solid relationship with the Lord, but what are we doing for the Lord? I know it's not all about works, but what it comes down to is we may have a relationship or we may have a desire to seek Him, but we still haven't done His purpose. And that's what's significant about my vision as well, is everything is interconnected. Everything is interwoven. Everybody knows everybody else. There is a communication. There is a gathering. There is an understanding. There is a network of believers. And when one falls, another one is there to pick them up. And when another one is sad, everyone is sad. When another person is joyous, Everyone's joyous. And that's what I feel like the Father is saying. This is what he wants his church 
to be. This is what he wants his church to be doing. He wants to be married to us and have a covenant with us that cannot be broken. He wants to set us free from the things that have hold us back for so long. This is his desire for us. And this is my vision that I have. Myself, my calling is a bridge builder. And if you ask me now, what does that look like? Right now, I could not tell you. But for all I know, what Corey and myself are doing is we're building bridges. And could anything come from what we're doing now? As far as these episodes are concerned, it could be. Or they could not. It could go a couple years down the road and then this thing will just fizzle out and dry up. But in the meantime, it could help whoever it needs to help. And just as I am putting out these episodes, or my wife is putting out these episodes, I'm also asking for your prayers. Because your prayers are important. And your prayers matter. And if you've been praying for us already, like I said, we even if we don't know who you are, we thank you for your prayers. And me personally, I'm going to thank you for your prayers that you pray for me. As I'm going through my fiery trial. But I know in the end of this, there will be a reward. And that's what the Father has been telling me is, there will be a reward at the end of this. So I'm saying to you, with whatever calling that you have or whatever feeling that you have in your heart, there will be a reward at the end. God loves you. And I know he loves me too. And I think that's where it's supposed to end. So Father, we thank you for this meeting. We thank you for this episode. We thank you for this time that you've laid down. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to be doing in the future. We don't know everything. You give us parts. We prophesy in part. We know in part. And some things do pass away, which is why we need to rely on the fruits of the Spirit and faith, hope, and love. So Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch those individuals that are going through a trial because I know for a fact as I'm going through the trial it's not very pleasant so father I pray that you would bring encouragement into the listeners hearts father I pray that you would bring reconciliation where reconciliation is needed closure where closure is needed. Hope where hope is needed. And if some hearts have failed, I pray that you would bring love and where those hearts need it. And Father, I thank you for your vision and I thank you for where you are bringing us. So Father, I just speak peace over our listeners. I speak resolution over them. And Father, I pray if there's one particular circumstance that they're going through at this moment in time, Father, I pray that that would break in the name of Jesus and that they would receive breakthrough in that circumstance or those circumstances. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again. Till we meet again.
Shalom.